G'day everyone, Ben the Spider Seeker here. Today we'll be talking about the slightly lesser known Australian mouse spiders. Now mouse spiders are from the Actinopodidae family. In Australia, Miscellina is the only genus from that family, which is the mouse spiders. There's a few possible stories about how they got their common name, whether it's because someone found one in a burrow and assumed it to be that of a mouse, they eat mice, which they don't, or that the stocky looking females somehow resemble mice, which I don't really see. At the moment, after a revision in the last couple of years, the mouse spiders are now considered quite closely related to the funnel webs of the Atracidae family. An indicator that they're related is the similar structure of their venom. The venom is so similar, in fact, that in the very rare cases where there's been serious envenomation from a mouse spider, the funnel web antivenin has proven effective. This is good since funnel webs are much easier to milk, so they readily produce the venom drops on their fangs when they're threatening, where mouse spiders don't. Not all mouse spiders look the same. Both of these spiders are Miscellina ocatoria, the red-headed mouse spider. The one on the left is female, all black and much larger than the male on the right, with its brightly coloured red head and blue abdomen. Not all male mouse spiders are so brightly coloured though, some species only have red fangs, some have no red or patches of colour on the abdomen, and a couple are solid black. The difference in appearance and structure between the two genders is called sexual dimorphism, where the genders of a species look essentially completely different. It's very common in spiders, but it's not always so spectacularly obvious as it is with mouse spiders. The difference in size is quite significant. While this female has a leg span of about 4.5 centimetres, or just under 2 inches if you're not up to date with the metric measurements, the fully grown mature male here of the same species measures in with a leg span of about 2 centimetres, or less than 1 inch. The males, like many myglomorphs, wander in search of mates, but unlike most myglomorphs, they do it during the day usually not long after rain during autumn and into winter. The females remain in their burrows throughout the year though. The burrow entrance of the female is very well concealed. It's camouflaged by a flap with a double entrance. It has irregular edges as well, blending in perfectly with the surrounding habitat. The two sections of the covering that remain of the double entrance can be seen here and here. The only reason I managed to find a female recently was the flap had been removed and was sitting about 20 centimetres or 6 inches from the burrow entrance. Since the female burrows are so well disguised, they aren't very often found, unless you accidentally dig one up while gardening or something like that. One particularly unique identifying feature of mouse spiders compared to similar spiders is their very wide eye arrangement. They have two groups of three eyes off to either side, and a central pair of eyes. The whole arrangement spreads out basically across their entire, well, face, I guess. Another quite clear feature of mouse spiders, apart from the rather squat, bulky appearance of the females, thanks to some disproportionately short legs, is the steeply raised cephalic region, which is sort of their head. They're not a very common spider, and despite their different body structure and the bright colours of the males, they're often mistaken for funnel webs. But what about that venom? I've already mentioned that it's similar in structure to the venom of funnel webs, but is it as toxic? Short answer, no. But the toxicity of the venom varies between the species of funnel webs. The Atrax robustus, which is the Sydney funnel web, is credited as being the heaviest hitter, but there's quite a few other species that don't carry that same reputation. The mouse spiders are considered medically significant, and the recommended first aid treatment for a bite is currently the same as that of funnel webs. The venom of mouse spiders has the potential to have similar effects to that of funnel webs, but there have been such a small amount of serious envenomations, it's been difficult to build up a complete picture. There's only been the one recorded and confirmed envenomation, and two other cases that have been difficult to confirm. And overall though, the venom 
toxicity of mouse spiders is rated below that of funnel webs. There is something a little bit weird about mouse spider bites. There was a case reported where, after being bitten, the spider latched on and it held on. It eventually had to be crushed by a doctor to remove it. And the only symptom reported was that the person was hungry, because in all the excitement they'd missed out on their lunch. Now I saw something similar to this happen while I was trying to move the female mouse spider into an enclosure. I used my usual method of putting down a container and trying to coax it in with a plastic straw. Now I used the plastic straw to avoid causing any damage to the fangs if it does bite. And it did. It bit the straw and it held on. I did manage to get it into the container and very carefully levered the spider off the straw. And there was no sign of venom afterwards in the straw. This is an example of what's called a dry bite, where the spider bites but does not inject venom. So while these spiders are considered medically significant, they have the ability not to inject venom when they bite. But if you're bitten, it's probably worth getting the bite treated and seeking medical attention, just in case, because it can still ruin your day. So, now onto the danger rating. Let's find out just how the mouse spiders stack up. For Venom, I've given them 8 out of 10. They're le less toxic than the funnel webs, but they're more toxic than the redbacks. For defensiveness, I've given them a fairly solid 7 out of 10. These spiders are quite quick to show and maintain a defensive posture in response to a perceived threat, and if biting, might actually latch on and hold on. But they can, and reportedly they often do, withhold their Venom when they bite, bringing their defensiveness score down just that little bit. The risk of contact, I've only given them a 4 out of 10. Even though they have a wider distribution than funnel webs, and they have daytime wandering males, thanks to their smaller size and the grassland or bush habitat they inhabit, they're not frequently spotted in populated areas. They're also not particularly common, having taken me about 10 years to finally find one, and I've been actively looking for them. Distance to help varies quite a bit, having a distribution across most of Australia, but again, this score is affected by the potential for receiving a dry bite, which means help might actually not be necessary, and their usual habitat it brings the rating to about 6 out of 10. Overall, mouse spiders have scored 6 out of 10. So, yeah, medically significant, and this spider can be dangerous if not treated with respect, and especially so if they happen to decide to use their venom when they bite. But their habit of giving dry bites, and the relative rarity compared to other spiders, brings their rating down quite a lot compared to where it would be. Overall, mouse spiders are a widespread but relatively uncommon spider. They have a few strange habits, like giving dry bites and features like their short, stocky legs and incredibly wide eye arrangement. They can, however, be an incredibly stunning spider and will gladly pose for the right photographer, holding their threat posture for a long time. This female sat in her posture at the bur entrance to her new burrow for about 25 minutes. As always, it's worth taking care with any spider and treating them with respect. But with a bit of understanding and care, they're quite easy to live with, if you can bear living with them. If you like this kind of thing, and you want to, feel free to like, share, subscribe, and check out the other videos I've made. For now though, I've been Ben the Spider Seeker, and you've been great. Catch you next time.